Welcome to Is It Observable? The main objectives of Is It Observable is to provide tutorials on how to observe a given technology. Today's episode is part of an existing series that we already started on a very popular cloud native technology I'm referring to Kubernetes, of course. So we already explained in this series how to retrieve metrics with the help of Prometheus, uh, how to retrieve logs, and we cover, by, in fact, two episodes. So one with Loki and Promptel, and the other one with Fluentbit. And last, we recently did cover how to collect events and represent it to open source project. And the one that uh, introduced the technology today was KSpan. So today, I'm going to reveal which technology I'm going to cover today. We are going to cover a very useful angle uh, in the observability. It's how to collect traces using a standard called open telemetry. So if you are looking to understand why your application is slow, or why you're getting errors, where you're spending time, then this episode will be very useful for your project. So if you enjoy today's content, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. So what are you going to learn out of this episode? So first, we need to do an introduction on open telemetry. Then we will cover the various data collections of open telemetry, which are traces, metrics, and logs. We will then touch base on the various components of open telemetry, the collector, and the various client library available. Today, we won't do any tutorial because we will have a dedicated episode explaining your journey with open telemetry. So let's start with the introduction. From the moment, our application are more complex using several services, technology, database, various cloud provider, it becomes very difficult and critical to understand how a business transaction is going through our, our architecture. Especially if you have a part in your system, then you're moving on to another platform, another product, uh, you're losing track once it has left your environment. So we want to understand where it, where it goes and we are more interesting to understand where we are spending time, which service, uh, which components are slowing down our users. Open Territory will allow us to collect traces, metrics and more, you see logs, from our system and export it to a solution of your choice that will help you to analyze traces, metrics, and logs. So Open Telemetry is providing what we call distributed tracing. So technically, it's the technology that will allow us to have the exact level of details that we're looking for to drill down and understand where we're spending time. Just by looking at the name, Open Telemetry. So you have open, open stands for open source. And then you have telemetry. And telemetry is come from a Greek world, word, which means tele means remote and metry measurement. So open telemetry, it's an open source technology allowing you to collect remote measurements. Open telemetry is in fact, the comes from two existent open source project that just merged and it's open tracing and open census. Open telemetry it doesn't provide any observability backend solution like Prometheus or Jaeger. It's defining 
uh, standards. So uh, if you decide today to uh, get, collect traces and send it over to solution A, um, it won't be a problem to move to solution B because it's the same agent, the same protocol of communication, same standard. It's just that the solution that will store your traces will be different. So much more easier to transition from one tool to another. So that's a great news. When you're dealing with open telemetry, uh, it requires two steps. Basically, first, we need to generate data from our applications. So we'll see that. And second, we need to store and consume the data collected. Open telemetry, to be honest, doesn't bring any technical revolution for us. I mean, most of us has been dealing with observability platform. And uh, so, and those platform were already providing the ability to drill down in our code. So if you take a step back in the past, the solution were named APM. And if you remember well, there was a solution called CA Wiley and CA Wiley has the ability to drill down in Java code. And then other solutions came out and most of those solutions has the ability to drill down. So it's the case of Danatrace, Neural Relic and many others. Open telemetry doesn't use a property format that other tools does, it provides a standard. So which everyone uses that standard, which means I can start a trace from my app, but from the moment I move to an application I don't handle, I may be able to also continue the trace and understand if I been slowed down by my third party application. All right, so let's see the open telemetry data collection. So first, a traces. So what is a trace? A trace is the ability to drill down. We all know that. So to explain what is a trace, let's take a short example with uh, the application that we've used since the beginning of Is It Observable, the Google Hipster Shop. So when you are doing a checkout in the Google Hipster Shop, the front end calls the checkout services, the checkout services will call the cart services uh, to check the, to get the cart, uh, and the cart services will interact with the database. So when the checkout services receive the call from the front end, and just before interacting with the cart services, the checkout services will look at the HTTP request headers to get the trace context. So the trace context hold the tracing information to glue all the spans together. <laughs> the checkout services can either uh, utilize if there is an existing trace context at the existing one, or it will basically create a new one with a new span, and a new span will have a name and a timestamp. So here we have the checkout uh, API call at that given timestamp, and then it, it will be added to the trace context in the HTTP request that we will send to the card services. The card services receive the request, collect the trace context, and it will also add its own span. So whatever the work a given service or method has to do, you can create as, as uh, many sub or child spans to attach the sub tasks. So for example, here we have the card details with that timestamps, uh, and then we can track uh, the interaction we'll do with the database. So here we have a database call. Uh, and then after we receive the database information, um, we need to process the data in order to do stuff and send back the response to the checkout services. So trace context is the information that helps to link all the span together to create at the end a trace. So span has a name, a start time, and an end time. You can also attach to the span attributes that will give you more details related to the actions, the technology that you're dealing with. So, and there are predefined attributes depending on the technology you use. So for HTTP, for example, there is HTTP.method, HTTP.statusCode. For database, there is the DB type, DB instance, DB statement. 
Uh, and then for the messaging technology, you can also messaging systems, destinations, and so on and so forth. And that information is usually usually very in, in, uh, important to understand the context of the request, the host name, the machine handling the request, uh, the customer in the fire, um, anything related to Kubernetes as well. So new spans may be created to represent work being done by a subcomponent of a service. With the service, uh, when the service makes a remote call to another service, the current span context is serialized and forwarded to the next services by injecting the span context into the headers uh, or if using message, messaging technology will be part of the message envelope. The next data collection is open telemetry metric. So a metric is simply a measurement that you can capture during your runtime. And there are three type of metrics with open telemetry. So there's counter. It's very much similar to Prometheus counter. So it's a value that will sum and that will just grow over time. There is a measure. It's a value that will be aggregated over time. And last, there is an observer. So we capture a current set of values at a given time, like a gauge in Prometheus. Similar to traces, um, metric will have context and it will also be important for the metric information. So metric has a name, a description, a unit, a kind. So the kind is a type, so counter, observer, measure, a label, uh, the type of aggregation and the time. Last data collection is logs. Logs is also a dimension that is going to be part of open telemetry, but it will see it's pretty much under construction as of now. Let's jump into the open telemetry components. So there is first the open telemetry collector. So the open telemetry collector is not necessarily required. Uh, you will see depending on uh, your, uh, your solution that will basically ingest your traces or metrics, you may not use the collector. But sometimes the collector makes your uh, deployment much more easier and faster to change your uh, destination solution that will uh, ingest your traces. So you have several ways of deploying this collector. Uh, you can either deploy it as, a, as an agent. So basically the collector is an instance uh, re running uh, with our application on the same host. So it could be uh, either uh, in, in a old fashioned technology in the same machine, or it could be in a, con in a container world like a sidecar container, or we could also deploy it as a daemon set. Uh, in each nodes, we will be close to the workload and it will be acting like an agent. Then you got the getaway, uh, so deployment. So one or you can basically have one or more collector that are running as a service. So one per cluster, per data center, per regions, you're very flexible. In fact, the recommend, recommended deployment is if you have a fresh new app, then yeah, choose the agent. Uh, if it's an existing one, it's more com maybe com more complicated to add the agent everywhere. So you can deploy it as a gateway. In the case of Kubernetes, it's going to be an agent because we're going to use daemon sets. So it's make complete sense to use the agent model. Uh, within the collector, there are several components. So we have the receiver that will get the data into the collector. It could be either send through push or pull. Then you have the processor. Uh, so basically you have received some, some, some data and you can decide to, do, to transform it or do whatever you want with it. Once it's been processed, then we probably want to export the data to several uh, solutions. So not only one, you can have several solutions uh, similar to what we've seen during the Flimbit episode. Um, and basically you can send it either through pull or push. Uh, and everything that we describe, so receiver, 
exporter and processor, they are defined through a collector pipeline. You can create a pipeline to process, transform, and then send it over to an exporter. And in the top of a collector, we have extensions. So in terms of extensions for traces, um, there are the receiver and the exporters will be able to receive open telemetry, of course, uh, Jaeger and Zipkin. The processor, there are several ones. Uh, see the attributes, patch, uh, retry, resource, sampling, span. Uh, for metrics, um, you all have uh, receivers for open telemetry and host, and Prometheus, of course. And same thing for as an exporter, you can either send it to open telemetry format or to Prometheus. And then you, you can have also community-based component where you could basically build your own extensions that will enhance the uh, collector pipeline. So it's similar to what we've seen with the film bits. Uh, we can imagine that we can create a dedicated uh, exporter for our solution of our choice that will receive and ingest the traces, the metrics and the logs. The pipeline is basically defined through a configuration file. So it's the hotel collector configuration file. Uh, in the case of Kubernetes, like usual, that configuration file will be stored in a config map. So here is the pipeline that we used uh, on the previous episodes for Kubernetes events. Uh, in order to send it to Danatrace, we uh, case span were sending the open telemetry traces uh, to an open telemetry collector and that collector will send it over to Danatrace. So here we can see that we have a receiver, uh, which is OTLP, the protocol you can define if it's uh, the gRPC or the HTTP protocol. And then uh, you can define your exporter. So in my case, in our example, it was the HTTP uh, open telemetry protocol and we were interacting with the uh, open telemetry ingest API of Danatrace. But you can see, which is interesting is in this example, we were using the HTTP protocol exporter, but also you can generate logs. So you can also, if you want to, for debugging purpose and you want to send to a log, you can also do that. In terms of co communication protocol, you will see in this example, we see the receiver and uh, the exporter has a notion of protocol. So there are currently two types of communication protocols supported. The open telemetry HTTP, which is in fact protobuf. And the other one is gRPC. So depending on uh, the pr pr protocol supported by your third party solution that will store the traces, uh, you will probably need to utilize the collector to convert uh, the, uh, the, the, the format uh, and the protocol uh, to be able to ingest it on your target solution. The th second component uh, of OpenTelemetry is the instrumentation library. So application needs to have an OpenTelemetry library to collect either manual or automatic instrumentation. So currently OpenTelemetry has various languages supported in terms of libraries. So we have C++, .NET, Alang, Go, uh, Java, JavaScript slash Node.js, uh, PHP, uh, Python, Ruby, uh, and Rust and Swift. What is important is that most of the those library, they support automatic instrumentation. So it means that you will have to load that dependency or li the library related to open telemetry and you will have to configure uh, the connection to your collector um, through environment variables or system variables in the case of Java. So if you want to launch the, uh, your jar files, you can say java-jar with your jar files and you can add then the properties to attach your open telemetry library and the various configuration uh, to attach, to define the destination of your traces. For most of the language that is supported. Automatic instrumentation means that it will attach a library to the runtime of our application and inject bytecodes to capture open telemetry 
from a number of popular libraries and framework. So what does it mean? Well, it means that it won't instrument your code automatically. It will basically all the well-known frameworks uh, of the markets, they will be instrumented because we know them. So if you want to know if you're the framework that you use is supported, I would recommend to go to uh, the OpenTelemetry websites, which is here, uh, and you will see all the various um, frameworks supported per type, per, li per library. So the manual instrumentation. So basically, uh, you will code the settings to interact with your collector. So you will have to precise the data source, the exporter, the propagator, and so on. So basically you add the dependencies, like if you take the, the example of Java, we'll add a Maven dependency or a Gradle. And then in your code, you will basically have a new library that will allow us to, one, configure uh, the, config the, the communication with your collector, and two, uh, what are the traces that you would like to collect, what are the methods that you would like to uh, generate traces, and so on. And so forth. So here's a table uh, reminding the current support for each languages. Remember there's various data, data collections, so traces, metrics, and log. As you can see here, uh, most of the, uh, the languages, they are either in a pre-alpha uh, or a beta version in traces and metric. Uh, and few of them have started to have an implementation, usually in, in experimental, uh, for logging. Uh, .NET uh, has a, a stable version for traces, uh, metric is alpha and, and log is beta. And Java, you have a stable release as well for traces, metric is alpha and experimental for logging. So depending on the language, Check out uh, this uh, the, the, the OpenTelemetry website. This table has been updated, so you will be aware if you will be able to generate metrics, logs as the traces. So traces is a good starting point, but keep in mind that you can also collect metrics as well, which is a cool feature. And last, the logging will be also interesting as well. So that's it for today's episode uh, related to OpenTelemetry. Uh, like mentioned here, there won't be any tutorials because we will have two distinct episodes where we have tutorials and we will do the journey uh, related to open telemetry. So first one episode on how to instrument, how to get started with uh, putting traces and instrumenting your code. And the second one is how to uh, utilize the traces that you have ingested. So. If you like today's content, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and we will build other uh, content to help you uh, extend the observability in your environment. So thank, for, thank you for watching, stay tuned and see you soon for another episode. Bye.